Now, as we have seen, structs are a way by which I can collect different related data together into one place. Enumerated types are one more example of custom data types that we can create and primarily they have just one use case which is making the code a little bit more easy to read and understand. Right? So, they are alternative representations for data right? and under the hood, in other words, the compiler basically translates them into integers. Right? Uh, but the exact sort of assignment of values to an enumerated data type is not something that is enforced either by the compiler or by the runtime. You cannot really print out the value of an enumerated data type. Right? So it looks as though there are very limited sort of use cases for this. But when you actually start debugging and you are using a debugger, it turns out that you know that is one place for example where the actual values of enumerated data types can be seen. Now it's difficult to really explain what enumerated data types are without looking at an example. So let's look into that right? rather than talking too much about it. So as an example of an enumerated data type, I have out here a type def. Right? I could have done it without a type def in which case I would have just had enum and you know this set of curly brackets with these values out here and this thing saying days of week. Right? Uh, let me just get rid of this for a moment here. What ends up happening is, you know, uh, type def enum, mun, tu, ved, etc. What has happened is I have created a string like representation, right, which allows me to now use things like I have declared, you know, days of week x, comma y, and I can say x is equal to mon, capital mon. The case is important, I cannot use small mon. What is also important to note over here is I am not, this is not a string. Right? MON is not a string. It does not have sort of you know the double quotes around it, right? And it is actually being explicitly used as this token by the compiler, right? A token is basically one part of your source code. It may or may not be visible in your final compiled executable. In most cases, it's not visible. So this word MON will actually not be visible anywhere else, right? It's just that it's usable within your code. Now the interesting thing is, let me just uh, comment the rest of this out. If I actually go ahead and print this out, right, what you will find is that it actually prints x is 0 and y is 4. It does not print x is equal to mon, y is equal to fri and so on. So what did it do? It basically said this enumerated data type, I will start with 0 out here, then go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that fry gets the value 4, which is what gets printed out here. Okay. Now, why is this useful? Right? It's primarily because of readability. When I'm writing my code, I can sort of, you know, actually assign a different value to it, which says that uh, I, I can use these strings or these tokens internally and make it a bit easier to understand what I am looking at with respect to my code. Now enumerated data types are integers which means that you can also do weird things like for example just you know if I say wed is equal to 20 what will happen is that it restarts the numbering from there 0, 1, 20 right and therefore fry gets the value 22 because Wednesday was 20 so THU gets 21 and FRI gets 22 right. It's even worse, I can even do things like fri is equal to 0, right? in which case what will happen is y is also 0 and in fact if you do something like that you will find that you know it actually passes this code, it says Friday is the same as Monday, right? which would not have been the case if I did not have this, right? if I did not have this redeclaration, now fry has the value 22, mun has the value 0 and when I compare them it does not print that statement out. Now, am I restricted to actually those values? It turns out no, right? Even though I declared x as of type days of week, if I try assigning a value 200 to it, yeah, it accepts it. It says x is equal to 200 and it has no problems continuing with that. So the bottom line is if you think about all this, you might be wondering, you know, why did I even bother to declare these uh, enumerated data types, right? And the primary reason is code readability. Right? So let's take an example of that. 
what I'm going to do is show you how you can use it in, for example, a switch case statement, which is probably one of the most common use cases for enumerated data types. Let's say that x has got the value fri from some, for some reason. Now I can do a switch on x, right, where I check for case Monday, case Tuesday, case Friday, and based on one of those values, it would actually print something out. You might notice that, you know, the thing is already giving me a warning saying that four of the enumeration values are not handled in the switch, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, right? I know that, that so that's okay, I'm going to ignore it for now. What happens when I run this is, it takes x is equal to fri, it matches against the case fri and prints whatever was there on that line of code, right? This actually can have a very significant impact on the readability and maintainability of the code, right? Because rather than just putting case 0, case 1, case 2, which is essentially impossible to understand what you are talking about, right? And instead of having strings out there where you are trying to match uh, string x with the string Monday and so on, it allows you to use an enumerated type, right? Unfortunately, since it does not enforce the enumerated type, the constraints or, you know, what values it is allowed to take and so on, it is of sort of limited use. Primarily, it sort of boils down to, you know, the ability to be, uh, to have better readability and you need to use it with care. You cannot assume that the compiler is going to enforce any kinds of restrictions on how you use it. But if you do use it appropriately, then it can make a big difference to how your code becomes easier to present to others and to maintain readability of the code. Okay. So that's, so essentially what we have is several different types of structured data. You have structs, typedef, which is a way of, you know, more cleanly defining new data types. You have unions, which are overlapping data and enumerated data types that are, again, syntactic sugar for allowing you to have multiple different enumerations or options that you can choose among. 